Hey everybody, this is ZBrush. I recently learned how to rapidly block out characters in ZBrush. I watched a bunch of videos about it, but they only ever had a part of the puzzle, and that's because a lot of the techniques they used are quote-unquote basic, and, uh, and they didn't bother to explain them. I finally put it all together. I think I have what is the normal pipeline, and I'm going to explain it to you from zero. If you, like me, aren't actually very good at ZBrush, hopefully this will be able to take you into the realm of blocking out your characters instead of trying to drag them out of a sphere. The basic process is to add primitives to this object, put them in place and reshape them as rapidly and fluidly as possible. There are two things I'm not going to teach you. I'm not going to teach you the camera. Go learn that if you don't know it. And I'm not going to teach you how to add brushes to your interface. I've done this just because I need these two brushes a lot. Uh, they're just the Move and the Im Primitives brush. Those are the two brushes we'll be using. It turns out changing your interface is very, very strange. Um, so if you're interested in that, go, go look that up. You don't need it. <laughs> Let's get started. I have chosen this basic sphere as a starter, but this basic sphere is not actually as basic as it may seem. If you click on it, you're actually going to get, if you're in draw mode and you click on it, you're going to get this warning. Uh, it depends on what sphere you pick. depends on how you start it up. You want to have something that's got X symmetry, but a lot of the things that have X symmetry have uh, a strange geometry setup. So you come over here into geometry, just pick the lowest resolution and delete the higher resolutions. Now you're all set. While you're in here, you might as well turn off Dynamesh. If Dynamesh is turned on, you're probably going to have a lot of problems because you're going to trigger it accidentally a lot. So I just turn it off when I'm doing this. Now we can add it in. The M primitives brush inserts a primitive, like say this sphere. This sphere is blue. That sphere is red. I've got this poly uh, frame turned on. That shows which poly groups there are by the colors. This is super helpful. We're not using, we're not like blocking out colors right now, we're just blocking out shapes, so just turn it on and leave it on. Uh, it's, it's much, much less confusing if you can actually see the polygroups. The new object is not only in its own polygroup, it's also been highlighted. It's the only unmasked part. This lets us very, very rapidly edit the new ball without actually moving the old ball at all. So whatever we want to do to this guy, it won't affect the old guy. See? If we go over into move mode, this is the move brush, this is the move mode. Mm -hmm. You can do that by either clicking up here or by hitting W. Q and W switch between draw and move. You're going to be switching between these modes a lot, and until you get used to it, you may accidentally find yourself in the wrong mode. So pay a little bit of attention. If something isn't working the way you expected, you're probably in the wrong mode. Anyway, since this is masked, since this is masked and this is unmasked, this will allow us to move this however we want. We're going to be using these gray elements more than anything else because these are screen space adjustments. No matter how confused the rest of the ball gets in terms of this might be like pointed in a strange place or it might not be on the center line, whatever the widget's doing, you don't have to worry about it because we're going to be in screen space. So that means we can just adjust it however we want. Um, and if we wanted to move it, we just click on this move brush, make sure we're in draw mode, and we can adjust this to be whatever sort of shape we want. I'm making a torso right now, not a head, in case you're wondering. If you're not familiar with masking, there are two basic masking operations that we're going to be using all the time. One is to flip the mask, and one is to clear the mask. To flip the mask, hold control and click in the background. Now I've got the other object selected. See? And I can just edit this separately. Now to clear the mask, hold control and draw a box in the background. Now, if you find your geometry does something very strange when you do that, hit control Z, that's undo, go over into geometry and turn off Dynamesh like I told you to. You might want a Dynamesh at the very end, you do not want a Dynamesh now. And you can see that now that nothing is masked, I'm kind of selecting both of these balls at the same time. They're both moving. It's not usually what I want. 
oh, how am I going to mask just one of these? Uh, well, it turns out that you don't want to be in draw mode. Switch over into move mode. Now when you control click, it will highlight one of the poly groups. And so you can just choose a poly group to edit very, very rapidly. Super handy. Anyway, let's go back into draw mode and draw ourselves a grungular region. So just come down here and draw it in. By the way, when you're drawing, there are a couple of weird things like this. See how that turns into weird spindly shapes? That's a little weird, right? Well, this is kind of handy sometimes, but it's something you have to get used to. You can't actually make the sphere any smaller. Uh, whatever size you stop dragging it out to, if you try and drag it the opposite direction, it turns into a spindle. If you hold shift, it's going to try and align with an axis in a kind of peculiar way. That can be handy. I don't generally use it. Um, so just so you're aware, there are a lot of weird options with this. Like if you hold Alt, you can do all sorts of weird stuff. Um, you can play with that if you want. I'm sure that there are pros that are really good at it. I find that just using uh, the basic spherical shapes and dragging them into position and then manipulating them when they're in place is generally enough for me. So this is obviously um, a little chunky, so we can just alt click or control click on the middle one there, control click, switch over into draw mode, uh, make sure we're in move using move brushes, otherwise we will end up drawing more balls. Here we are, and then we've got a kind of chunky person, I don't know, just starting to get the basic shapes in place, and we can just adjust them as we see fit, right? How about these legs? Hmm, what are we gonna do about the legs? Well, we could use a sphere. I know most people do, like turn it into a spindle. But the problem is that the legs really aren't shaped like that. That's, it's always a lot of work for me to try and reshape those into legs. I switch over to the capsule for this. Problem with the capsule is that it's on the wrong axis. I don't know why they chose to make it on this axis. It's obviously the wrong axis. That doesn't make any sense for anybody. Fortunately, it's really easy to fix. Just go into move mode and use your screen space adjustments to move it into place. like so. One of the things you're going to want to be careful about, this x-axis mirror is really annoying. Uh, I'll show you what I mean. So if we move these close together so they're pointed straight down, and then we try and move like this, uh, it's not really going to move because it's grabbing things across the x-axis. Now there are ways to deal with that. You can be like, um, you know, just, just selecting things on one side of the axis or just masking on one side of the axis or whatever. I, I don't recommend worrying about that. I recommend using an A shape. Just have your legs spread a little bit. Uh, one of the reasons this is good is because it will uh, clear up a little bit of space in the crotch, which is a trouble location. Um, a lot of meshes have very poor crotch topology. Uh, it's especially a problem if you're doing like a fighting game or something where people are kicking. I generally like having this kind of A shape gives me more space to work with. And uh, sorry if you could hear that, I burped straight into the mic. So then we can come over into the move and we won't have any problem moving this into shape. Now, one of the things you might have noticed is that there's no topology between the top and the bottom. I actually like that for things like legs and, uh, um, and, and the like. It just lets me focus. I don't have to worry about all of the miscellaneous pieces that aren't supposed to be there. So we can just try and shape that into kind of a, a thigh-like shape. How are we going to do the shin, though? Are we going to um, maybe use imprimitives again to draw another capsule? We could, but that seems like work. So we're going to go into move mode. We're going to hold control, and we're going to drag. That perfectly duplicates the existing mesh. This is uh, absolutely great for legs and arms. It lets you create the second segment um, without having to redraw anything. And, you know, it just works. Great. Perfect. Uh, it does have some minor issues. Um, one of those issues is that it doesn't create a new polygroup. This is one of the reasons I tend to work with these polygroups turned on. It's in, a, it's in the same polygroup, which means that if we try and select one of these, we're actually going to end up selecting both. And they don't really do what you might think, so we don't want that. How do we fix it? Well, one way to fix it is to go over here into polygroups and hit auto group. I don't recommend this. The reason is because now it's not mirrored anymore. 
this is this is weird. Uh, there really needs to be a way to auto group across the x axis. I don't know if there is one, and I just haven't found it or what, but don't do that. Instead, what you should get used to doing is inverting the mask and then hitting group masked. This will create a new shape, a new uh, a new polygroup for this shape. This is something you're going to have to do a couple of times for a couple of different reasons, so don't be shy about it. You're going to you're going to need to learn how to do it. And then of course we can just shape this into a proper shin shape. Oh, that was not what I wanted. That's fine though. No biggie. But how about that knee? How are we going to create a knee? Well, you could try and model a knee out of these shapes, but in general, if you're trying to put another shape in, it makes sense for the new shape to be a shape. So we're going to go over here into draw mode and we're going to draw in a new shape. Maybe a circle would be, or a sphere would be better. This is just super, super basic stuff, right? Um, and we can just drag that back into uh, the area and sort of shape it into maybe something a little bit more knee shaped. It's uh, it's something where I'm not going to try and pretend that I'm the best person around. It's um, not not something I've mastered, but it's something where we can put these shapes in really, really rapidly, and you don't need to force yourself to model them out of existing topology. That's the whole point when you're blocking stuff out. You're blocking stuff out because the existing topology is supposed to be easy and loose. You're supposed to have a lot of control over it. So if we then select this, we can tweak this. So that it makes a little bit more sense. However we want it, it's all good. Now how about Zem feet? Well, let's go back into the primitives. I'm going to go ahead and use spheres for the feet. We're going to drag it out and we're going to create like a spindle shape. We could use like the inflate brush or something. Um, but you know what? Now that I'm looking at it, I think it would be better to have the heel as a separate object. So we're going to create the heel and wait. That's the same polygroup. What's going on? Well, when I said that every time it hap every time you add a shape, it creates its own polygroup, I was lying. What it actually does is every shape that's attached to the previous shape has the same new polygroup. So if I were to add a hundred shapes to this leg, they're all going to be the same polygroup. Similarly, if I were to add more shapes up here, these are going to be the same as the knee polygroup. Or oh no, I must have clicked down there to create, create the knee. But as you can see, all of these are going to have the similar polygroups. There are some rules about when it doesn't happen and when it does. I'm not really clear on what they are. Like this one is blue for some reason. Not sure why. But in general, I work with polygroups visibility turned on specifically because of this um, feature. <laughs> so uh, just so you're aware of it. We're not going to try and model the foot. Um, the, the way to do feet and the way to do heads is to use lots of shapes. You don't actually want to just use one unless you're really confident that you're going to be able to model it perfectly um, when it comes time to actually do the modeling. You're going to want to use like an arch shape and a uh, heel shape and all that stuff all separately. It's just fine. It's not, not, not challenging. It's just a matter of modeling it all together, right? Um, but now that I've added the foot, I can clearly see that the... Uh, we got a little bit of a cankly shape going on. We could just smooth it out by holding shift. And, you know, you can just do whatever you want to do. It's all good. Oh, we are missing the top half of the character. And also we've got a pretty porky body. But that's not the point. The point is this is how you rapidly block out a character. You do it using the imprimitives brush and the move brush and the move mode. Understanding how to control polygroups and how to select polygroups and invert masks are your primary powers. There are lots of advanced things that you can do, like breaking things off into new sub-tools, um, changing the density of objects. We're not going to worry about any of that, because when you're blocking things out, chances are pretty good that you're going to get a good flow going, and you're not going to need any of those other techniques until near the end, at which point you can stop and look them up. 
the whole point here is you don't want to break your flow while you're working on the core shapes. And these is this, these are the techniques you need for the core shapes. Let me know if I missed something or you didn't understand something. Um, it's possible. Uh, there's a lot of stuff in ZBrush. Thank you, ZBrush. How many times do I have to turn off that feature? Anyway, thank you for your time, um, and I hope that you block out some cool characters. Have a good one. Oh, uh, just in case you're you're not aware, you can um, turn this into a model. Um, why is this? For some reason, Dynamesh isn't turning on. Oh, there. I guess you have to have everything selected in a certain way. Uh, so you can Dynamesh it, and that should combine everything. I'm not sure why mine is now barfing. I presume it's because we went to... Um, it, it actually Dynameshed, but it's super high density. Yeah, Dynamesh is a little bit finicky. So there, you can see I just Dynamesh it at a low density. So when you want to turn it into a final mesh, you can use Dynamesh like this. There are a lot of things you can do with Dynamesh. Like, for example, you can turn on group preser preservation. Um, you can polish it. Uh, you can use uh, Z Remesher. There's lots of cool things you can do there. But that's at the end, after you've already figured out your shapes. Have a good one.